This is the fifth question from GS2 paper. This is with regard to the role of local bodies in providing good governance at the local level. And bring out the pros and cons of merging the rural local bodies with the urban local bodies. Now, the municipal corporations or municipalities, they are including the nearby villages. They are including nearby villages. It is inevitable because urban areas are growing. When the panchayats are not brought under the urban governance, then you will have the separate cultures, separate systems, homogeneity of a city that cannot be maintained. Whoever are migrating to the urban areas, they are mostly settling in the peripheral areas. And most of them or some of them, they are ruled by panchayats. Governance in panchayats is different, municipalities is different. And there are two parts in this question. Clearly, separate parts. Analyze the role of local bodies in providing good governance. What is the role of local bodies in providing good governance? That is one part. Second part is the pros and cons of merging the rural local bodies with the urban local bodies. Quite often you find the notifications of merging rural local bodies with the urban local bodies. And how to make a good beginning? After more than 40 years of independence in 1990s, 1992 or so, 73rd, 74th amendments were brought. It instituted several sections of the constitution or you can say in the constitution several clauses were incorporated and two schedules were also added through these amendments. Several items or you can say Several areas are proposed to be transferred to the local bodies. Of course, each state will decide that. Though the issues which are to be transferred to the local bodies, they are mentioned in the constitution, 11th and 12th schedules. But which items are to be delegated to the local bodies, that is decided by the states through statutes. That you can call anomaly in this constitutional amendments. That's why many states have not delegated several functions to the local bodies. Let us come back to the discussion. Through 73rd and 74th amendments, Indian constitution provided a constitutional mandate for local self-governance. Prior to that, there was no constitutional mandate. Originally, as per constitution, there is constitutional mandate for central government and state governments. Through the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment in 1990s, the constitutional mandate is given to the third tier, that is local bodies, panchayats, municipalities, corporations. Panchayats and municipalities play a critical role in ensuring decentralized governance in India. And the first part, role of local bodies in good governance. When the local bodies are at the forefront, Governance became need-based and within the reach. The representatives are there, nearer to their houses, among the locality, among the community. They know the problems better than the state government officials. Service delivery became efficient as the number of functions are to be transferred to local bodies. Of course, here you can ask another question whether it really fulfilled or not. Several functions are supposed to be delegated to the local bodies, but many state governments have not done that. Participation and accountability through Gram Sabhas and Ward Committees. All the adults are members of the Gram Sabhas. And Gram Sabhas has got several roles in the panchayats. Even social audit is part of Mahatma Gandhi Narega. Managing the local finances in a better way Catering to the community needs. Pivotal role in economic development as the local bodies prepare and implement development plans. In various areas, they prepare five-year plans. And that is the beauty of this local governance. The successful implementation of Swach Bharat Vision, Mahatma Gandhi Narega, Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, Solid Waste Management, Waste Segregation, of course, Solid Waste Management, Waste Segregation, that is implemented in few urban areas even now. But 
Swachh Bharat Mission is a huge success. PMAY, it is relatively successful. And Mahatma Gandhi Narega. So these are all not possible without decentralized development. Let us come to the second part. Merging the rural local bodies with urban local bodies. I told you why they are being merged. Because urban areas are expanded. There are panchayats adjacent to urban areas. They can remain panchayats, but they will be pockets of rural culture in the urban environment. There are benefits. There are disadvantages. What is asked in this question is same thing. Pros, advantages. Panchayats cannot manage the complexities of inevitable urbanization. Suppose if some educational institutions, if some hospital, any other employment opportunity like IT sector, when it is coming to those areas, when they are managed by panchayats, it is very difficult. Panchayat members may not be able to understand what is the importance of IT company. So it is inevitable they should be part of the corporation. Integrated planning ensures homogeneous urbanization. Otherwise, what happens? It will be skewed urbanization and takes care of rural urban migration properly. Better sustain the population pressure because you can see it holistically by the corporation or the Metropolitan Development Authority. Then efficient management and better utilization of funds benefits the rural areas because rural areas will get more and more services. Tangible and intangible wealth is created in the rural areas. That means their land values will increase. They get benefited because of exposure to development. So there are a number of advantages, but cons are also there. Resistance from rural areas. As the services become costlier, this house tax will increase inevitably. People are not interested in that. And at the same time, resistance from the local landlords and local politicians because their hegemony will go away and benefits that accrue to rural will be permanently lost. That means, for example, Mahatma Gandhi Narega, it is no more applicable. Stepmotherly attitude. There is a perception that the corporation will take care of busy urban areas when the nearby Rural areas are merged into corporation. They may not bother about rural areas. Stepmotherly attitude. Cultural and social differences. Then increase difficulty in harmonizing the procedures. Panchayat procedures are different. Urban procedures are different. How to conclude? With increasing urbanization, the merging of the rural local bodies with the urban local bodies is inevitable. However, the issue should be carefully evaluated and various stakeholders should be taken on board so as to prevent hesitations and forced measures. Right friends, thank you.